One of our charter partners here on Alive with Joan is BCRF, the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. And this foundation was started uh, years ago when Evelyn Lauder of Estee Lauder fame uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer and she fought it bravely. But then years later, she then was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and she passed away from that ovarian cancer. Her husband, Leonard Lauder, has really, you know, forged on to make sure that this foundation continues uh, in support of his very brave wife. And in fact, they're the ones that brought us the pink ribbon. Thus, I'm wearing pink for you today, Leonard Lauder. And I just want to tell you on a personal note that as I was going through my breast cancer treatment, Leonard Lauder reached out and sent me emails now and then checking up on me. And so when we started Alive with Joan and we were deciding who would be our charter partners, I thought of him immediately and thought, you know, if he's reached out to me and made that effort, I should go to him first. And they, they fund so much important research all around our country and really around the globe. Now, interestingly, years ago, I actually went to the Estee Lauder company to do Behind Closed Doors of Estee Lauder. I don't know if any of you remember that show that I used to do. I loved that show. Um, I always called it my ticket to adventure where I could go behind the scenes. Uh, and so when we went behind the scenes of Estee Lauder, we not only talked with the corporate leaders at that time, Evelyn, uh, Leonard, we also went into their laboratories. And I'll never forget walking into the lab, to one of the labs where they were testing lipsticks. Now, you want to know who they were? They were men. And the, you don't want to know how they were testing them? They were putting lipstick on their lips. I mean, it took us everything not to, like, burst out laughing and say, really? You guys are actually putting the lipstick on your lips to test it out for us? But they were. So anyway, I wanted to share with you a good little blast from the past, as far as I'm concerned, Behind Closed Doors of Estee Lauder. Behind Closed Doors continues here on A&E. They say that beauty is only skin deep, but in the business of beauty, it goes much deeper. Join me as we go behind closed doors of one of the biggest names in cosmetics, Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder is more than just a line of makeup. The company is an international power player that owns 16 different brands, including Clinique, MAC, Origins, and Bobbi Brown, just to name a few. Their corporate headquarters are in New York City on Manhattan's stylish Fifth Avenue. I went behind their closed doors and discovered that inside their little jars is a lot more than just cream or lotion. There's science and psychology. They're selling the hope of youth, beauty, and sex appeal. It's absolutely my goal to make sure that women continue to feel beautiful about themselves every day. Millions of consumers are buying it. Last year, Estee Lauder sales hit $4.7 billion. It all began in 1946 with the ambitious dreams of one young woman. It was a classic American success story. Armed with homemade creams, an eye for beauty, and a head for business, Estee Lauder turned her love for makeup into an international empire. Multi-billion dollar, but still a family business. Very much a family, and our family is just a very large family spread around the world right now. Estee is now in her 90s. Her son, Leonard, is the company's chairman. Her daughter-in-law, Evelyn, is considered the nose of the company, developing the new fragrances. This one's better than that. Estee's grandson, William, is the chief operating officer, and granddaughters, Jane, and Aaron work in advertising and marketing. A model shot with the product. Estee taught them all her simple business philosophy. 
and she said, if it has my name on it, it has to be the best. It can't be second best because you can only fool a woman once. Once you fool her, she'll never come back to you. They have come back. The company has grown every year for the past five decades. How does Estee Lauder stay out in front? I think first and foremost, we start with a certain principle of paranoia in our company. I spend my time in the shower in the morning saying, what is my competitor going to do to me and what can I do to them first? Boy, your grandmother really instilled that sense of competition, huh? You know, it's really very simple. This is something my grandmother always used to tell me. She said, we want to find a way to get a woman to put her hands together. In this hand is her pocketbook. We want her to take this free hand, stick it in her pocketbook, pull out her card, and say, I'll take it. What's your top selling product? The single number one selling product in our company is dramatically different moisturizing lotion from Clinique. We sell one product every four seconds, somewhere in the world, every single day. They have about 9,000 different products in all, but there's always pressure to come up with ones that are new and improved. The cosmetic business is hugely competitive. Uh, it's dog eat dog, everybody watches everyone else, and uh, it is on a worldwide basis. It's like playing a worldwide chess game. To a large extent, that game is won or lost in the laboratory. This is Estee Lauder's high-tech, high-security R&D facility in Melville, Long Island, about an hour outside of New York City. Good morning. How can I help you? Behind these closed doors, teams of PhD researchers work to find new ways to look better and younger. In a sense, they're looking for the fountain of youth. About 300 scientists with backgrounds in medicine, chemistry, and biology are continually experimenting, blending, mixing, sniffing, testing, and yes, trying on their latest creations. All of this research takes time and money. They spend more than $60 million a year on R&D. How many new products come out of here every year? Uh, last year, I believe we had about uh, about more than 300 new products. Really? Yes, yes. And we're tracking maybe more this year. They have seven laboratories around the world and collaborate with more than a dozen universities. But breakthroughs can come from some surprising places. Many of the things that we're working on come from, you know, the jungle where a witch doctor brewed it up, or they come from just the, something that somebody's grandmother was making. And then sometimes they do come from a new biotech company. But we're not proud at all. We'll, we'll talk and, and work with anybody. For years, Native Americans have known about the healing properties of white birch bark. Now their labs are proving it and applying it to their line of skincare products. Now, these are the actual natural products. These are natural products. Oh, white tea. White tea. Jars filled with bark, mushrooms, and exotic teas line the shelves. Their active ingredients will be extracted and then tested, not on skin, but on skin cells. They don't test on animals. With their microscopes, they showed me the differences between a 45-year-old skin and that of an 80-year-old. They look stressed, and I think that's representative of an 80-year-old skin. So but then what can you do for that? Well, we're investigating our new materials um, that would help slow this process that happens or even reverse it. What are you cooking up here, Michael? I'm cooking up a lipstick. And what first, do you start with there? First, we start with the liquid component that's found in the lipstick wax base. All right. And here we have our colors. We have our primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and we also add white. In the lipstick lab, they're obsessed with color, texture, shine, and wearability. <laughs> now, come on over here, because I'm going to show you who's testing our lipsticks, ladies. A bunch of guys. Now, you're putting the same color in a few different places? Yes. Because it looks different on different kinds of skin? Or? Yes. What do your friends think when you tell them what you do? Um, well, for my guy friends, it's a little strange me work with makeup, but the girls all, they like it. And they're always interested to learn more. Yeah? Do you have a favorite color? Yes, I do. Which one? Rose. Rose? Yeah. How about you, Pat? Peach. Peach? More of the peach colors. More the a little. Peach color. Not too not dark, not too red. bright red. Yeah. Let me see that again. 
That works for me. When we come back, the marketing machine behind the beauty and the science behind the cell. Behind Closed Doors continues here on A&E. Behind these Estee Lauder counters and dazzling displays is a business based on the promise to make you look more youthful and more beautiful. I went behind closed doors at Estee Lauder to see the technology behind those promises and the strategy behind the sales pitch. Before the glossy magazine ads and ambitious claims, a new product has to be put to the test. This could be a doctor's office, but it's not. This is a clinical testing laboratory where we actually test the efficacy of the products. The company has about 4,000 volunteers who come to their Long Island labs from all over the New York area. They are their guinea pigs. Do they at least get a goodie bag of uh, cosmetics? Or? Yes. They usually get a gift certificate to go to our company boutique. The volunteers get put under a microscope. That's a close-up of the skin. Yeah, it's the fiber optic microscope. And what we're looking at right now are her pores. It can magnify skin pores by 30 times on up to 1,000 times magnification. This is before any type of product use. We could capture these images, then send the panelist home with product to use. They'll come back after four weeks of product use, and then we'll go to the same site on the face, and we could actually compare to see if we're actually able to reduce the pore size. Doctors and hospitals routinely use ultrasound, and so do they. It allows clinicians to track changes in the skin beneath the surface. And this odd-looking contraption is a ballastometer. It measures the skin's firmness. All of these tests help provide a scientific basis to back up the claims that their products work. But it takes more than science to sell billions of dollars of cosmetics. It also takes psychology. It's not just the technology of what the product does, but it's how the product makes you feel, how the product makes you look, and also there's that unmeasurable sizzle about how, what makes you want this product. Women feel much more confident when they know that they look their best. They can walk with more assurance and they don't think about how they look because they know they look good. Basically, they're selling self-confidence. With 16 different brands, each with its own image, they're targeting everyone. If you don't like chic, maybe you'd prefer something natural, or custom, or clinical. The marketing strategy for all of their new products is designed behind closed doors in their Manhattan headquarters. Everything we do, every image we project at point of sale, every box, every carton, everything should be designed in such a way to enhance our brand image. We want to create the soft surgery. In the case of a new skincare product, simply saying it gets rid of wrinkles isn't enough. Their spin. But I, I do think that we don't have to be so heavy anti-aging. I think it's, I think pro-aging, positively aging, seamlessly aging. Then there's the question of how to package it. A jar, tube, or pump? Oh, we'll I, I happen to prefer the pump because it's a little bit more elegant and it gives you a little more control on how you dispense it. At another meeting, they decide what the package should look like. We've been looking at various things for a few weeks, but we've got to narrow it down. There's some variations on the cylinder uh, in finishes. The color of the bottle and every aesthetic detail is painstakingly discussed. This is for shape and okay. some for okay. color. Okay. Um, we can combine and mix the okay. two. The ad campaign is next. Estee's granddaughter, Erin, knows what she wants the ads to capture. Technology related. You know, I mean, there's a way of kind of balancing beauty, so it's just not like beauty fashion. You know, I mean, you can... It's all about creating the right image for each product. And no one knows that better than CEO Fred Langhammer. Well, ad advertising uh, enhances the brand. But if you have a great advertising campaign and the product does not deliver, you're nowhere. You have a one-time experience. Months of hard work in the laboratory, numerous tests, and careful planning all come down to this, 
a big vat of goo. Their factory in Long Island churns out approximately one million products every day, and that's just one of their facilities. We have 10 plants and 10 major distribution centers around the world, United Kingdom, Brussels, Canada, all over the United States. Much like cooks working in a giant kitchen, they mix up huge batches, carefully following the recipe created by R&D. It's a massive, multi-billion dollar makeup machine, all built on the dreams of one woman, Estee Lauder, behind closed doors. I'd like to extend my personal thanks to all those who helped us gain unprecedented access to make this show possible. Please join us next time when once again we go behind closed doors. For A&E, I'm Joan London.